Greetings, unsettled souls. <laughs> Welcome to the Correct Views. Sam, I beat again. You're doing political commentary for the media scoops. How many of you are ready for the dump cap of the month? Great, because I'm not doing it yet. I am doing it on Monday, and uh, that's just going to be the easiest way for me to get these sent out. And uh, Fukushima was back a day, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, make that its own big thing. Dunce cap of the month is coming up on Monday, Monday, Monday. That means it's time for the other news, and uh, this is good news. Um, Reddit. Uh, dot com. Have you ever tried to post a Reddit, by the way? It's easier to get a degree in physics. Just, just a heads up. But anyway, Gary Johnson is now polling at 15% among Midwest states. This is according to a CNN poll. And again, CNN, the Clinton News Network, they're hardly a friend of Gary Johnson, so it, it's probably rather believable. Um, here's the good thing about that, and I, I want to say why, because I'm probably confusing a number, number of people here. Particularly if you're on Twitter, because you're seeing me post things that are in favor of Gary Johnson and then post things that are questioning what Gary Johnson is doing. And I'm going to clarify that for you here. First of all, I have been um, a libertarian for just about all of my adult life. And the reason for that is because I happen to be somebody that likes facts, common reason, and sense. Um, the libertarians tend to be right on more issues than the other parties do. And that that has always been the case. I voted for Johnson last cycle. I was even fortunate enough to have gotten to interview Jim Gray, who was his VP candidate. And I've always liked Johnson. Um, I still don't think he'd make a bad president. I really don't. The problem with Gary Johnson is that he is not against NAFTA. I found out yesterday he's not even completely against the TPP, which is going to completely uh, further uh, outsource and rape the economy. And he isn't against illegal immigration. He didn't think that Hillary Clinton committed any criminal acts with her email, even though everything about it reeked of criminal activity. For those reasons, I have begun to uh, lean strongly towards our President Trump. Yes, Donald Trump. Um, however, do I dislike Gary Johnson? No, I actually like the man. Um, do I think that we need to have a third party in the debates? Yeah. Um, I'd feel the same way if we were talking about Jill Stein posting these kinds of numbers. And I think she's a lunatic somewhere along the lines of uh, socialism meets bankruptcy would be our future with her. So, no, I don't really like her. But if she was polling at these numbers, if somebody called me on the phone and asked who I was going to vote for, I would lie and say Jill Stein. Because getting a third party in the debates will hold the two major counties, the parties accountable, and it will guarantee that the two-party system in this country is severely broken up. Now, a lot of you are going to go ahead and mention Ross Perot. Uh, I get it. But the trouble with Ross Perot is, one, he was a coward. He ducked out of the presidential election because they threatened him. And um, for another thing, people were saying that he had no political experience. That's not the case with Gary Johnson. Gary Johnson's a two-term governor. He turned a surplus over on his state, was New Mexico, and was wildly popular among people in his state for the way that he did, in fact, govern. So to say that Gary Johnson has no experience is a complete and total fabrication. So there you go. Um, getting a third party in the debates. If you don't know why that matters, then take a good look at what the two parties have done to our country. And the reasoning for this will become abundantly clear. Um, even if Trump were to still win, which I think he's going to, putting Gary Johnson in the debates has a, a, a two-side plus to it. Uh, the one side is um, two-sided. The one side is with a third party coming in, it will create more of an atmosphere of not having to necessarily assimilate to the insanity that the two parties want. And the other side of it, of course, deals with simply getting ideas in that need to be heard. Um, for instance, you know, a lot of third parties, let me go off screen share real quick. 
you know, a lot of third parties um, are in favor of getting rid of the IRS and replacing it with a uh, three or four cent tax on everything. Now, some people say on everything that isn't medical, that would probably be a better idea. We don't want to charge people for being sick. But um, every time you bought anything, there would be a one or two cent tax added on to it. The reason that that's a good idea is because that way everyone pays taxes fairly and there's no way around it. It also pulls the drug money out of the shadow. How? Because if you sell a bunch of cocaine and make a fortune, you're not paying any taxes. But if this, uh, IRS taxes, but if this was to be happened, then every time they bought their new Porsche or their new bling or whatever it is that Drake told them was cool this week, that would go into what was formerly the IRS. And it would increase the amount of revenue astronomically by bringing the uh, black market out of the shadows. And you know what? These ideas are being brought to you by the third parties, not by the two major parties. So getting these kinds of ideas out there is imperative. Uh, moving on, there's something in this country called posse comitatus, which in a nutshell says that we are not allowed to use the military to police the streets. Uh, that was, that, that's a slippery slope towards fascism, obviously. It was part of the problem that led America to secede from England, was that the, uh, the soldiers were staying in their house and rummaging through their house and taking whatever they needed at will with no oversight. Uh, sort of working as judge, jury, and executioner as well. This would bring a, an abrupt halt. Uh, Posse comitatus, I should say, brings an abrupt halt to that. Well, Germany, and don't ask me what uh, what is German for Posse comitatus. I can't help you. Germany is about to lose that, um, that bit of common sense freedom if this happens. This is from dcclothesline.com. I think that is their uh, first time on the show, as a matter of fact. So, uh, awesome congratulations to them. Germany may use internal army to combat terrorism as Europeans are told to expect attacks on a daily basis. Now, why are they being told to ex expect attacks on a daily basis? That would be because their idiotic leader, Merkel, has been allowing way over migration to happen to the country. Anybody who's downtrodden is free to go into the country whether or not they plan to assimilate, whether or not they plan on terror, whether or not they are there simply to wreak havoc, they come there anyway. That has led to such a large number of radicals that we are now seeing major terrorist attacks and loss of life now on a daily basis. Uh, it has come to light, I think, that every 86 minutes there's now a terrorist attack. Um, the, the Billy Corrigan was actually on the Alex Jones show mentioning that. Well, this said that suicide bombing, axe attack on a train, fatal machete attack, a priest's throat cut, and the mall shooting rampage. All of that just since a vehicle plowed through hundreds of people on the streets of nice France. And is there any end to the madness, it asks. No one came to the aid of uh, the European people as they cried out about the obscene way in which Middle East refugees were being allowed to storm into the country as countless women were raped and culture clashes reached fever pitch and many areas became too dangerous to go anymore. Now, you've got to love that because the, the left keeps claiming that they're the ones who are in favor of women's rights, and yet when it's the leftist idea that brings in hordes of people that start raping women, it's the hordes of people that are doing the raping that the left decides they want to help. And then people wonder why Donald Trump in this country is doing so well. Maybe because he wants to go ahead and make sure that this kind of thing doesn't happen here. Call it a hint. Hey, Gary Johnson, maybe you should pick up on that. Um, now Muslim radicals, ISIS thugs, and lone wolf sympathizers are striking out all across Europe. And it's happening so quickly that the media can't even cover it all. People, it says, uh, have little sense of how far the violence is spreading. So I'm not going to go over all of the terror that we've seen, but I can give you a brief synopsis. Here's Europe's terror timeline. July 16th, priest executed in Rome. 26th, the same day, doctor shot dead in Berlin. 24th, machete-wielding machete madman kills woman in Rudolgen. Same day, bomber kills himself, injures 15 in the Ansbach. 
July 22nd, shooting rampage in Munich kills nine. On the 18th, an axeman injures five near Würzburg. 14, a truck attack in Nice kills 84 people. On March 22nd, bombers kill 32 people in Brussels. And on November the 13th, gunmen and bombers kill 130 in Paris. So you can see it's picking up from the two that were sprawled out when this started to the one, two, three, four, five, six, seven that happened in July. So intently, it says, has Europe been bombarded with attacks that officials are literally warning citizens in France and Germany and other areas to expect attacks. So this is what the left does. They say, you're going to be fine. We'll bring these people in. Nothing's going to happen. And then when it does happen, the, the, the outcry, the, the great answer is to just accept it. Well, RT reported that during Tuesday's press conference, Seehofer said Germany is facing a new dimension of terror. Yes, that would be because of your leader, dumbass. While Bavaria's interior minister announced that the state's police ranks would be increased, Herman also suggested that Germany's army, the Bundeswehr, could be used to aid police in dealing with a major terrorist threat. And there's a debate over whether to deploy the Bundeswehr domestically until, or they should not wait until the next attack happens. In other words, it's the Hegelian dialectic, friends. They go ahead and they create the problem. They offer the solution to the problem, and they repeat this over and over again. In this instance, they bring in people against the will of the populace. And then when that becomes the problem that the populace knew that it would, then they say, we have the solution to it, which means breaking posse comitatus and putting police on the streets. Um, friends, all of this brought to you by Change Transportation. You can see right there a screen, pause, screen, share, do whatever you got to do. But call 330 737 1297 and let Change Transportation know you need a ride. They're cheaper than Uber, and they're even cheaper than that if you tell them that you listen to the correct view. And obviously, you do. Zerohedge.com. European banks soar as a druggie hits the public backstops hints at public backstop. So what that means is this. How many of you know what a backstop is? How many of you know what a financial haircut is? Let me explain. Let's say you put money in a bank and that bank goes under through no fault of anybody's but that bank's leaders. The bank can take the money out of your account to put towards the debts that it has incurred and you never see the money again. This is why I made a video called How to Live Without Banks. Um, you might you might say, well, Sam, how do you do it? Well, um, right now I'm freelance writing mostly as a, as a living. And I'm either getting the money sent to PayPal, which is on a debit card, and uh, it's a bank card. And I grant that it is a bank that has it, but I tend not to leave money on that card unless I'm making an immediate payment, in which case the banks don't have time to remove it. Or I cash a check. I don't even have a bank account right now, but I'm going to have to get one. I will cash the check and immediately take all the money out. Why? Because the bank's going to take it out. It happened to Cyprus. It happened to Greece. It hasn't happened here yet. But it's now happening to Europe, and it's spreading, just like the zero interest BS that's come up everywhere. So no, you shouldn't keep your money in a bank, and here's why. By Tyler Durden, nice name. If ever there was a reason for more European nations to exit the sinking ship, Mario Draghi has spewed one. Having sent European bank stocks sliding with earlier calls for reform, Draghi's wishful thinking is sent bank stocks soaring, especially Italian banks, after he noted, quote, a public backdrop, that is a way to take your money, is a measure that would be very useful and should be agreed with the commission according to resisting rules. So the, the, the commission should agree that it's okay to steal the people's money who put the money in the bank for the good of the bank even when the bank is working at interests and derivatives and investing in areas that they have brought their own grief to themselves in. Don't you wish you could get a deal like that? That's the kind of deal my wife's always trying to talk me into taking. We can only imagine her Schwabel's face when he heard this. And what about the Disobalm template? Look at that graph. A bail-in. 
we all should agree that it is you and I's responsibility, or as it were, the people of Italy's responsibility, to, you know, go ahead and pay all the debts that we did not incur just to keep the bank afloat. This, this, is, this is madness. You'd have to have a brain with the density of a mushroom stem to think that's a good idea. Um, I, you guys know I do the massive Fukushima update um, every month. I just posted it yesterday. Um, I probably should have done this show Thursday, but I didn't want to completely throw the pattern that everyone is used to off. Um, this is from Simply Info. Japan, I think that's the first time for them, too. Japan's business lobby bails on nuclear. What that means is the people have spoken loudly and proudly. They do not want nuclear power in their country. Why? There's a number of reasons. The most obvious is that the uh, Japan is for you know maybe maybe you're a Beyonce fan and if you are you know I know you're a little bit stupider than the rest of the population so I'll help you with this. Japan's an island, believe, believe it or not, it's an island. And um, islands are created by, among other things, disruptions in plate tectonics, which trigger earthquakes. Therefore, the very things that created Japan could very easily destroy Japan someday. Building a nuclear power plant, which of course if it has a meltdown affects millions if not billions of people, raises cancer rates, uh, decreases quality of health, hurts the heart, poisons the food supply, it's probably not such a good idea to build this on, a, uh, on an island like Japan that sees tsunamis on a regular basis. We also have had scientists say that there was going to be an attack as substantial as the attack that happened, and nobody would listen. Well, those people are still talking. It's still not safe to do this. So the people of Japan have spoken. You know, we gave you a chance. You melted down, melted out, and melted through the reactors at Fukushima. So no, we don't want any more nuclear power. And a lot of this is being pushed forward by the idiotic greenie weenies. By that I mean, man is warming the planet. No, man is not warming the planet. However, continuing to insist that is creating an environment where people think that nuclear is a good idea. Even if man was poisoning or warming the planet, it would still not be a good idea. I'll be the first to admit that uh, coal is increasing our chances of getting lung cancer by putting all of this garbage into the air. But it doesn't increase your chances among all kinds of cancers anywhere near what radio, radiation or radi uh, radiation plants. That's what they are. What nuclear power plants do through radiation. If you don't believe me, ask, ask Helen Caldicott. She's on Facebook. Ask Dr. Chris Busby. Go ahead and look at the massive amounts of data that we have. Look, at, look up birth defects, Belarus. Please don't do it when you're eating. This is all from nuke. This is all from nuclear power. It says, we have tracked this issue since 2011, but this is an unexpected turn. Japan's business lobby, the Kuroderen, the, the Kidarenren, has been loudly pushing nuclear power. Now Reuters is reporting that another influential business lobby, the Japan Association of Corporate Executives, is pushing for changes to Japan's energy policy. They want the government to shift more renewables and away from nuclear power. This is going to be really, really important because this is going to prevent the Kyrindren, and I'm sure I'm butchering that, K, K, Kydenren, K E I D A N R E N, you try it. This is going to prevent those swines from poisoning the entire northern hemisphere, is what this is going to do. We have a sense of crisis that Japan will become a laughing stock if we do not encourage renewable power. Pause. That's not true. That's not true at all. The leader of the, uh, the Philippines just correctly called global warming a lie and pulled out of uh, all of the agreements that the UN tried to host upon them. So no, they're not going to be the laughing stock. The uh, Philippines is viewed as a hero for this. A like hero of the rest or the, the Orient, however you want to look at it. Their ideals are more west, you know what I mean. In our early reporting, only companies like Suzuki and SoftBank were actively taking stances against nuclear power and for renewables from a business standpoint. So therefore, Suzuki, who needs praise, saw nearby nuclear power plants as a risk to their business stability after the Fukushima disaster. Now let's pause. What do they mean by that? 
Well, a lot of people don't want to buy Japanese cars today, myself included, even if they're used, because the the parts that you buy from that are coming from Japan. They're not tested very well. And there has been a lot of data suggested even if they were tested and it turned out to be utterly glowing, they're going to sell it anyway for the bottom line. We're talking about business endeavors here. So Suzuki doesn't, doesn't want this to continue. Um, SoftBank jumped into the solar farm business when new feed and tariffs were introduced. Good. The new turn where businesses decide the old ways are outdated and hinder their ability to cooperate in an international playing field could be pivotal to Japan's future energy policy. Look, you don't have a nuclear energy policy if it consists of building nuclear power plants. What you have is the immediate proximity around you greatly poisoned and their quality of life diminished from these things running, even when they run as they're supposed to with no glitches. Routine releases are what Dr. Helen Col caused, uh, Dr. Helen Caldicott calls routine cancers. So don't buy into it, friends. Don't buy into nuclear. And that brings us to the dummy of the day. The dummy of the day brought to you by Sticker Junkie. You're looking at Sticker Junkie right there. Make your own stickers. Go there. Get your stickers made. Look at that deal they have. 100 stickers starting at 45 bucks. Shipping three to seven days. Bam! Fast. And what do you get? You get amazing stickers. And what else do you get? An amazing deal. Because you're going to type in the correct views or the correct views upon checkout. And you're going to get an even bigger discount because you listen to the show. Friends, Dundee of the day. Bah! The Daily Sheeple. John Kerry. Air conditioners are just as dangerous as ISIS. This ranks right up there with Al Gore saying that there weren't going to be any ice on one of the poles by 2015. We are now in 2016 and there's more ice than ever. They are trying so hard to sell the global warming lie to everyone that they've now gone completely absurd. Bernie Sanders lost his mind and said that global warming was more of a threat than ISIS. And, of course, that's one of the things that made people uh, not support him was that he was going literally tax us into uh, oblivion. John Kerry's taken it one step further in the stupidity level. Over the past two years, it says ISIS, we call them Daesh because they hate that name, so keep calling them that. Daesh has made a terrifying name for itself. They hate it because it underplays what they're trying to do. In the Middle East, they've gained a reputation for brutally torturing their opponents and for forcing women and girls into sexual slavery. And again, the left is perfectly quiet on it because they only uh, they only are against uh, raping women and sexual slavery when it promotes their agenda, not when it's actually happening. Around the world, they've gained a reputation for their swift and devastating terrorist attacks. Clearly, Daesh is one of the biggest threats to public safety on the planet. But apparently, home, home appliances pose a greater threat. Or at least that's what Secretary of Hate John Kerry thinks, which is why he's winning the Dundee of the Day. I've mailed him dunce caps before, too. He recently visited Vienna to amend the 1987 Montreal Protocol so that hydrofluorocarbons can be phased out. Uh, these chemicals are used in air conditioning units and refrigerators, but they are apparently a potent greenhouse gas. Greenhouse gas. And during the meeting, Kerry was quoted as saying, Yesterday I met with Washington in Washington with 45 nations, defense ministers and foreign ministers. Well, I bet that meeting was not air conditioning. How many of you want to bet they sat there and sweated their sacks off for the good of all of mankind? There was no air conditioning running during this, right? Right, Mr. Kerry, you hypocritical son of a bitch. Yesterday I met in Washington with 45 nations, defense ministers and foreign ministers, and we were working together on the challenge of the Islamic State and terrorism. It's hard for some people to grasp it, but what we, you, are doing right now is of equal importance because it has the ability to literally save life on planet Earth itself. Yes, you read that correctly. John Kerry actually thinks that the murderous fanatics are just as dangerous as your air conditioner. And how does this thing kind of happen, friends? It happens when you live in a nation that is so incredibly dumbed down 
that they can no longer separate fact from fiction, nor do they care to do so. They just automatically believe what is ever spoon-fed to them. They don't look up Climate Gate. They don't look up Lord Monken. They don't look up uh, the fact that there were more ice sheets prevalent now in the poles than ever before. They don't look at the fact that NASA has said that the planet hasn't warmed in 15 years. They don't look at any of it. They just believe that the planet is warming and buy accordingly. Um, friends, if this doesn't stop, if this doesn't end, this nation's energy costs are going to be through the roof. And what happens when that occurs? Look up how good Venezuela is doing right now. And it might be worthy to point out that Venezuela was a socialist idea, not a libertarian conservative one. Um, their economy. I mean, friends, you're listening to the correct views. You got the dumb D of the day, and you got all the news with it. If you like the dumb D of the day, remember we do the dunce cap of the month. That happens once a month, and I mail a dunce cap to someone. I've mailed it to the FBI. I've mailed it to the White House. I've mailed one to Gary Johnson, God love him. And I'm going to be mailing one out uh, this next week, and I'll be doing the show Monday. If you want to donate to the show, you, my faithful listeners, can do show at the correct views of hotmail.com. Every penny you give me goes towards a better show, and that's what I want to give you. So please help me with that. If you're uncomfortable with that for any reason, look in my description, patron. You can donate to me monthly on Patreon, and I would really appreciate it. I lost a $28,000 a year job. On slow years, it was a $25,000 a year job, and I am now working for myself. So I need all the help I can get. I'd appreciate it. Good night, friends, and God bless.